Welcome to the Plant-Based Podcast. Did you know that plants are truly amazing? Not only can you grow them and eat them, you can also wear them, drink them, nourish your skin with them, and so much more. Let Ellen and Michael inspire you to love plants as much as they do, as they chat with the movers and shakers in this wonderful plant-based world. So, let's dig in. Which house plants can you grow indoors as well as outdoors? It's Cal and Choey. They're just as happy on the windowsill as they are on the outdoor summer patio. Cal and Choey are widely available, sustainably grown and offer amazing longevity and value. We've hooked up with the experts at Always Cal and Choey to bring you the first half of Series 5 of the Plant Based Podcast. You can find out more about these house plants by following at Always Cal and Showy on Instagram. Let us know where you place yours. Sometimes it really hits us how privileged we are to visit some incredible gardens that we do for this podcast, and none more so than today, as we are at the beautiful Helmingham Hall in Suffolk. We'll, we'll leave the banter between Suffolk and Norfolk <laughs> to another day on the podcast. And we are with Zara Tolomash for this podcast episode. We're going to be chatting about the history of Helmingham Hall and, of course, the hall itself. But mostly, as you would expect, it will be about the gardens and, of course, Zara's landscape and, uh, and plant prowess as well. All mm-hmm. that knowledge, we're going to try and glean some for listeners too. So welcome to the podcast. Oh, well, um- Really pleased to be with you. Well, well we didn't realise this is an exclusive. This is the first time you've ever been on a podcast. It is. So if I sound yeah. nervous, no, that's, that's, that's the reason. It's fantastic. <laughs> Michael makes people very nervous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, So yeah, welcome. It's really, really nice to have you here. Today we want to talk about the history of the house, the gardens, kind of what it's like to run a large estate as well, and also tap into your kind of plant prowess, as Ellen said. You're pulling out all the big words today. Get me! I I know I don't know what happened. I don't even know where it came from. Anyway, let's get started, shall we? (laughs) Disappointed. I'm quite sure you won't. Your gardens definitely don't, that's for sure. Um, as Michael was saying, we're talking about like the history of the hall and the gardens. Can you give us like a potted history of you know Helmingham Hall and Gardens? Like, just talk us through it. I mean, it's just such a beautiful mm. place. I can't wait to find out. It's more. a very romantic place, isn't it? Yeah, it's a shame I'm here with Michael. <laughs> <laughs> shame about that. <laughs> yeah. So, just the history of the hall and gardens would be great. Okay. Well, well, Helmingham Hall, the hall itself, was built in 1490 finished in 1510, with its big moat running all the way around the house. Uh, previous to that, there was another house which was in the courtyard of the, of the main hall um, that was pulled down um, and Helmium rebuilt. But, of course, um, there's a garden moat which runs all the way around the gardens, um, and that predates the house. Oh, wow. And that mm. goes back to Saxon days, probably, oh. um, where they would keep their animals um, right. and to stop them being marauded or, or stolen, you know, right. um, from from um, from anybody who wishes ill can, ill well, content. Yeah. Oh. Oh, uh, just before you talk any further, you yeah. mentioned the moat, and I also know that you swim in the moat. I have just told you that. Yes, I know. <laughs> Get, I know. Inside that not of for broadcast. <laughs> Inside information. <laughs> dip, have a little dip in the moat. <laughs> Just a bit. <laughs> um, but um, not in this moat, another moat, actually. Okay. <laughs> um, so, um, uh, yes, so, so the garden moat um, goes all the way around the gardens, which were put down when the house was, was, was built and the gardens laid out. 200 years later, the walls came in, because I think around 1750, 1740, there were a lot of new plants coming in from the New World and all mm-hmm. these plant explorers. Yeah. would bring things around and everyone uh, would want to, you know, grow these plants and, and, and have walls to grow them up against and oh. for protection. So uh, that's really the potted history of the house and garden. And so, right. you know, I always think that my garden's been manured for about a thousand years. <laughs> <laughs> all, the, all of that poop. 
<laughs> well composted. <probably. laughs> and has the hall always been in your family? Always been in the family, yes. Wow. Um, yep. And now, of course, my husband and I moved about three and a half years ago. Right. Um, to make way for our son and his family, right. wife and three children. So they are now uh, living and running, basically, the whole place. Amazing. And I'm still, yeah. still um, advisor the role. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> <running the garden. laughs> your consultant yeah. extraordinaire. Yeah. Oh wow! And how how's the garden evolved over the years? Because I mentioned you haven't been able to change like the landscape of it necessarily, but I guess the plants, the borders, have changed within there, or are they pretty much as they were in the olden days? No, no. Mm. My parents-in-law mm-hmm. um, restored the house, and they did a, an amazing work bringing it back. Uh, mm-hmm. There was no mains electricity. There was oh, no. Wow. Um, uh, there was no mains water, um, and um, the roof had to be done. I mean, it's extraordinary what they did. Actually, um, it was amazing, and I don't think we'd be here today unless mm-hmm. they'd done it. Um, but of course, um, the gardens were 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 well kept and dug throughout the war because there were evacuees here, and uh, so it was feeding a lot of people, wow. Wow. and so it was very vegetable and fruit orientated. Mm-hmm. Um, I came along not knowing a thing about gardening. I, I, I just about could recognise a rose. <laughs> no, I promise you. And, um, and I, I went out um, about four years after arriving and, and, and thinking, you know, help. <laughs> really? Yeah. I've got to run this and I don't know why it's growing, where it's growing, why, you know, what it is. Or anything. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's a bit, it was a learning process, very much, wow. with the with the help, um, great help of our head gardener Roy Balam, mm-hmm. who only retired after sixty five years wow. um, a couple of months ago. Mm. Wow. wow! So he held my hand and sort of helped me through um, the process of learning um, that I wanted to to dig. I wanted to take my spade out and dig because I felt that I wanted to feel the earth and the soil mm-hmm. and. And, and, and know the whole process mm-hmm. from bottom up, basically. Because you, be, <laughs> you can often be spotted just digging and weeding around the gardens, can't yes, you? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you got the bug, that's for sure. Yeah. It took you four years. <laughs> but you definitely got the bug because the gardens are amazing. Yeah. Oh, thank you. And you're always out there, yes. yeah. still now enjoying yeah, yeah, right. it. And, definitely. Yeah. Um, so, um, yes, we've done uh, quite a lot to it, actually, mm-hmm. changing. Um, a lot of the garden within the walled garden Mm -hmm. Um, so reducing the horticulture or the produce and um, designing new more decorative areas Mm -hmm. which are less work Mm -hmm. than you know vegetables and the produce and the weeding and everything Mm -hmm. Um, and I think we've got it about right so that you know, people can enjoy the vegetables mm. and walk through the vegetables, but they're mm. not um, so uh, large as they were. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and there are okay. other areas of interest. You need and, a balance. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and I think there's lots of areas where there's a bit of humour um, and um, interest <laughs> in, 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 in colour combinations and all sorts right. of things. Um, so that was within the wall garden. Then in 1980, early 80s we did a whole new garden on the east side of the house Mm -hmm. which um, was previously um, full of ornamental wildfowl with um, ducks and geese Uh, that was a pet project of my father-in-law um, and anyway, those those went, uh, <laughs> and the garden came in place. It was already it. then, you know. I was oh, wow. sort of wanting to put um, our own stamp on the gardens, and we did a, a whole knot garden, herb garden, rose gardens, mm. and then of course it goes out. <laughs> and keeps so, on going. Yeah, keeps on going. a little bit more here and a little bit more yeah, there. Yeah, where's next? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I'm, I'm, it's up to them now. Oh wow! <clears throat> so um, we did a woodland garden in two thousand and seven. Um, because um, more as a sort of viewing platform to look at the, at the beautiful park which surrounds the house mm-hmm. right. and to grow trees that just wouldn't look happy in a, a you know, Tudor deer park with, mm-hmm. with only English oaks in it. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and so the sorbuses, the malus, you know, um, the, the, the pines, the, um, the rowans and, and all sorts of trees mm-hmm. which are more domesticated. Sure. Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, so that's taking shape 
It's constantly evolving, isn't it? And you That's, must be really I think excited. All of our gardens are, aren't they? I yeah. mean, yeah, however yeah. big or small your garden is, you you always change it and have new mm. ideas and want to do yeah. different things. So it's the yes. same principles at the end of the day, even Absolutely. though it's obviously much, much bigger. It's it's all relative, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and you must mm. be quite excited for you know for future family members, like where they will take the garden to, what Absolutely. ideas they will bring in as well. Well, they might want put a herd of goats in the wall garden, but... <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't be good for you, Gorgs. <laughs> well, so we're, we're going to ask you a bit about kind of like running a big estate like this in a moment, but first off, while we are talking about the garden, what, what is your favourite area? Oh, uh, well, i tell you exactly where my favourite area is. It's where there's not a great deal to be done. <laughs> <laughs> so I can sit round a fire pit, which is at the and bottom finally of finally relax. <laughs> and, um, you know, a glass by my side and under a lovely almond tree and we've got a fire pit and we sit there and mm -hmm. it's a very atmospheric place. You can look at the church through the, through oh, the gap in the trees. You can hear the church bells when they ring. Um, uh, and it's a, a place of um, a sort of little... Uh, a place where I first started to plant trees mm -hmm. um, and just wildflowers, wildflower sort of area. Yeah. So it's it, it you're not sitting there thinking I've got to deadhead that and I've got to weed that and I've got to tidy that. Sure. So you can just relax. <laughs> so that's you see, that's probably my favourite. That's part. nice. That's why I can't relax when I go to my allotment because yeah. when I go there, I'm like I can't relax because I need to do that and I need to do that and I can see a weed yeah. over there. You know, I can't. I can chill. relax easily in my garden because I'm perhaps a little bit lazy. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I've got this. I've got this policy this season where I'm letting the weeds come through. So I've actually got ah. tiny. I've got a few nettles here, a few pineapple may weed. Mm -hmm. And the kind of juxtaposition of the weeds with the real flowers. Like in my front garden, my neighbours must be so shocked because there's thistles coming through. But it's lovely, it's really beautiful. Mm. And of course, well, a weed is a flower flower. to the wrong place. Exactly, exactly. what exactly. is a weed exactly. anyway? Yeah. And my secret to success this season also has been not staking any of my plants. <gasps> oh no! <laughs> Shock horror. What's happening? Do they fall and then pop up again? Kind of, yeah. It just kind of works. I've got a full rose bush that is kind of like this. But the way it's kind of leaning on my pittosporum is just gorgeous. But yeah. anyway, it's not about my garden today. So. Oh, we're, all, we're talking about your garden now. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I thought your favourite area would be the topiary snails. Oh. Now you've got to tell us about those for a moment. Oh, well, that whole border was, it was mm. what was called the peach border, and it's, it's more or less south-facing. Um, and I'd done a garden at Chelsea in um, uh, 2003 or something like that. And uh, I'd had to buy a lot of plants for infillers, as you know. Mm -hmm. You've got to protect mm. your garden and, and, and have hedges, and you've got to buy all this infill, which isn't necessarily what everyone wants to buy on buy-off day. Mm. And in those days, uh, the RHS, it would just go on a skip. Now it's, it's, it's absolutely so yeah. different. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> They're all sent off to hospices and... Mm. and, and, and um, you know, wonderful places to give pleasure to people. Um, but then, um, you know, they'd just be loaded. And I'd spent quite a lot of money on these. And so I brought them all back, you and Box, basically, mm -hmm. plonked them in this border and told them, you know, what do they want to be? Yeah. So <laughs> they slowly formed. And Chris, um, our, our, one of our gardeners, is absolutely brilliant. And we'd say, well, I see a head there and I see a tail there uh -huh. and these and these um I think the snail came first actually yeah um, <laughs> he was an obvious snail but we've yeah. got we've got um two little bunnies um we've got Miss Jekyll's working boot um <laughs> we've got a frog prince with a crown oh, on his head oh I forgot about the frog oh I love that <laughs> oh I can't anyway. wait to see the yeah, yeah. they're fun they're that's fun. really cool oh, I love that adding a little bit of fun into mm. gardening that's important yeah. you know yeah. and you can walk around you know all of the gardens here and you can go from the roses and relax and the mm. scent and and then you can walk and have some fun and see yeah, a so sale, you know, that's really nice. Yeah. Um, yes. mm. One area, um, I came, uh, I think it was last year, it might have been the year before, yeah. I don't know what year it was what anymore, um, mm. but I remember seeing the wildflower area over the back yes. there. Yeah. It was so beautiful and there were so many insects you know, and I could hear them and I could see them and it was just lovely. And, you know, having this kind of di diversity of planting here, you must see so much wildlife. I think, I can't remember 
how many moths Chris counted, but you know, wow. masses of masses of wildlife, um, bees, different bees, yeah. different types of bees, um, wasps, obviously beetles, um, hoverflies, dragonflies. Because with the moat, mm -hmm. you've got all the water all the boatmen. Water. And, yeah, oh, yeah. Wow. yeah. So it's rich in wildlife, and 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 I think there's a little wildlife book actually in the shop, which is Wildlife mm. at Helmium, which is. Right. Very, very, um, it's, you know, um, informative. Do you enjoy that aspect, being able to go outside and see what you can spot? Um, yes, I do. I'm not a sort of, uh, I'm not a sort of addict about, about well, you know, insects and things. Mm -hmm. But when I see a beautiful butterfly, for instance, yeah. mm -hmm. it's yeah. very nice, or a dragonfly, or a yeah. hawk moth, or something. You know, it's yeah. just wonderful. But. Um, uh, it, it's just lovely to be in such a living world, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Garden, yeah. You're it's alive. Just, uh, it's alive. Yeah. It's alive. Yeah. That's the best. Mm. Oh, I love that. <laughs> um, before we talk about when the gardens are open, actually, I want to talk about kind of the challenges of running a large, what, what we would call a stately home, but you actually corrected us earlier, and it's not quite a stately home, but I think a lot of members of the public would be you know, oh my God, this is like a palace, but well, how is it correctly classified? And then to give us a little bit of insight on how, how easy it is to run such a large estate and kind of... The, or not easy. You know, the, yeah, the, the, the pitfalls and the positives, yeah. Um, well, I think there are many um, grander and bigger houses mm -hmm. than Helmium, um, but it, it wouldn't take long for somebody to realise how costly it is to keep up. Mm. You know, the repainting has got to be done you know, every few years, you know. Mm. It's very costly to keep up a house um, of that of this size, although it's not absolutely mm -hmm. vast. Mm. So it's um, classed as, sorry, it's classed as a large manor house, is that right? What is the... I would think a, a large moated manor yeah. house, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it is. it goes around a large courtyard, so it looks, of course, very huge mm -hmm. and beautiful and romantic and lovely, but there is a large courtyard in the middle. Right. Um, I wish it's probably just as well. <laughs> <laughs> then there's a lot more hoovering, isn't it? <laughs> I'm dusting. Um, and, and, and so, you know, and the gardens, I think when you look at how to bring income to support the house, um, you look at the assets. Mm. And the garden was obviously an asset because... We open the gardens to the public, and they've become, you know, almost world famous now. Mm -hmm. It's it's incredible mm -hmm. how they've they've grown on. Um, and uh, and somebody came the other day, um, and she was bowled over by it. And she said, "I feel that I personally have discovered this place uh -huh. because, you know, it's not one of the." You know, it's not like Chatsworth Garden or yeah, Blenheim yeah, yeah. or anything like that. And it's hidden away and there aren't many gardens yeah, you're right. around here, yeah. are there? So I think that's what she felt, which was very nice. Uh -huh. that's but lovely. I think to some degree Suffolk has been well hidden until very recently. Yes. So, yes. you know, maybe in 20 years' time, Helminger might be in the same kind of, you know, thought process yes. as Chatsworth, etc. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's like everyone gone. knows about Suffolk now. <laughs> That's why the roads are so much busier. I know about <laughs> Suffolk because you keep telling me about it. She's a Norfolk girl, you see, but you're outnumbered here. <laughs> <laughs> My best be careful what I say. So, so, okay. so basically we had to, of course, create income. Mm -hmm. um, and so the gardens opening it to the public was the first thing. A tea room then obviously came next, mm -hmm. then a gift shop. Mm -hmm. So this all produced income. And now, of course, we have big events. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we have two plant heritage fairs, uh, a dog day, which is mm -hmm. actually run for charity for each, for the, for the children's hospice, uh, <clears throat> and a car rally. Mm -hmm. And my son and daughter-in-law have... Um, uh, evolved this garden illumination trail in the mm, winter. Fantastic. Um, because it's it's really very, very exciting yeah. and beautiful. And you know, with the with the moat and the and the topiaries mm. and the reflection, it, yeah. it, it is magic. <laughs> and and also income in a time magic. of year when you wouldn't have many well, exactly. other events as well. So. We have to be careful yeah. because you know, a garden is a is a fragile thing, as mm. you know, Michael. You know, too many people can wreck mm. um, a, a place. But um, we've got that under 
control, or they have now because they run it. <laughs> I love how you keep mentioning that. Like, yes, it's them, they can do it. <laughs> so, so, yes, it, it needs those sorts of events. Weddings, um, we started off weddings um, a number of years ago, and that is also wonderful because it's such a romantic place mm, to have your yeah. wedding photographs <laughs> taken. Yeah, um, I bet. And, and so that's popular. So it is, um, it has to be income producing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's all part of diversifying for the future, yeah. I guess. For a, exactly, yeah. exactly. And mm-hmm. I think there's, I think they, they've, um, they've done a, a, a pumpkin treasure hunt this mm-hmm. October. That's fun. Oh, wow. Yes, yes. <laughs> they've, planted, they've planted a field of pumpkins. Oh, that's really cool. Oh, that's really fun. Oh, so that should be, you know, yeah. quite fun. Actually, I'll tell you that's at this fun. point why, why we were about 10 minutes late today. We almost got lost in a sunflower maze. Halfway up the A140. When you say almost lost, <laughs> I'd say at one point we were. Have you heard of it? It's lost. called Frog's Hall Farm, and they've got basically these sunflower fields, and they've got a labyrinth, they've got a maze, they've got all different, they've got a picking garden as well. It's, oh, it's yeah. brilliant, yeah, but we kind of misjudged the time it would take to get out of a maze. So <laughs> Did you lose sorry, each other? Okay, sorry, right. we were tired. Only, well, we didn't quite lose each other, but at one point you'd walk off quite yeah. far. And then I was, and I was back genuinely for you. thinking, oh, now I actually have no idea where we went. And I had a momentary panic because I have no idea where I was going. And then you came back. <laughs> Oh, we said, I don't want to come back to find you. <laughs> yeah, so that, that's a really good idea and a great way, seeing that example, to diversify just a farm as well. Yeah. Well, the yeah. farm has yeah. to diversify. That heads our pumpkin patch. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's a it's good move. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Lovely. I love that time of year as well. Yeah. Oh, picking up the pumpkins. <laughs> so when um, are the gardens open to the public? When can people come here to May, see? May um, to September. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Sunday. Okay. And then we have music in the garden gardens which our events manager Katie who's full of ideas uh, mm-hmm. has instigated yeah and I think you'll find that there are a group of singers in the garden yeah we nearly today. walked into it had to start <laughs> singing something <laughs> when I drove up the uh, lady asked me if I was a singer and yeah. I said definitely not <laughs> you're a spice you definitely don't yeah. want me singing that's for sure <laughs> Anyway, that's really good. Thank you so much. In part two, we'll be back and we're going to talk a little bit more about some of the landscaping projects that you've worked on. Um, And I know other projects as well with the RHS. And we're going to get some garden design tips and some some planting advice. Yeah, pick your brain for your favourite plants as well. Yes, we'll be back very soon. Okay, cool. I'm Joe Bahari. I'm your DIY expert here to give all you Plant Geek listeners tips and tricks for your outdoor projects. It's that time of year again, people, when the nights draw in and the weather gets cooler. We start thinking about decorating our homes for Halloween, for Christmas, Diwali, even bonfire night, whatever it is that takes your fancy. Here are some tips and tricks about how to hang those decorations safely without damaging your property. So your walls might be made of brick, wood, render, Where is the best place to hang stuff without causing damage? On most standard properties, you're looking at hanging your decorations on the soffits or on the brickwork. The soffits are the bit of wood that your guttering sticks to. Let's first talk about how you're going to hang those decorations onto your brickwork. For this, you're going to need to be competent with a drill. You will need a masonry drill bit... These have a tungsten carbide tip so they can bore into brickwork really easily. And you'll also need to use your drill on hammer mode. Quick tip, don't drill into the mortar. These are the lines between the brickwork because these could crumble and they won't be a secure hold for whatever it is you want to hang. But also by drilling into the mortar, you can let water into your brickwork and then into your property. Choose where you want to hang your decoration. Mark the area with an X, um, normally with a Sharpie or a felt tip pen that can be seen on the, on the brickwork quite easily. And make sure you are at a decent height so that you're not using your drill at an angle. Once you've made the hole, and I would suggest going small first because it's easier to make a hole bigger, it's not easier to make a hole smaller. Once you've made the hole, you need to put in a solid wall fixing so that your screw has something to grip onto in the brickwork. And just like that, you're ready to hang. 
Alternatively, you can hang your decorations onto the soffits or even door frames, window frames, porch frames, any other wooden sections on the exterior of your property. For this, you can just use a hammer and a nail if you want to. Or, alternatively, you can use a wood drill bit. These have a wider spiral than a masonry drill bit and a sharper tip at the end. And you won't need your drill on hammer setting. Super simple. But what if you aren't handy with a drill and you're a little bit nervous about drilling holes into your exterior? Or maybe you're in a rental property? Never fear. There are an amazing range of adhesive-style hanging options. For example, there are really good quality self-adhesive hooks on the market these days. These just need to be hung onto a smooth surface like wood or a window frame or even glass. Just make sure the area is clean and dry before applying it. That way they'll stick better. Alternatively, you can use something called nano tape. This isn't a sticky tape. It doesn't actually have an adhesive. What it has is millions of tiny suckers on it. It's double-sided so it can stick to the wall and to the item that you want hung. Just be a little bit careful when it comes to removing it because if you're putting on a painted surface, it may pull the paint off with it. So either heat it with a hairdryer or just peel it slowly and delicately off. Finally, just a few safety tips if you're working up a ladder. Don't carry up heavy loads. Put everything in a bucket that you can hang over your wrist so that you've got both hands when climbing up the ladder. And make sure that somebody else knows that you're working at height. Better still, have somebody hold the ladder for you. That's all, folks. Enjoy making your homes look festive this year, whatever holiday you're celebrating. So we're back here with Zara at Helmingham Hall, and we're going to talk more about her kind of garden design prowess. So tell us a bit about your projects that you've had at Chelsea Flower Show and kind of Mm -hmm. how you built up those design skills Mm -hmm. as well. Well, um, of course, I spent 20 years learning about mm. gardening in here. But on the, on, and, and on with, the garden, which is the best the way to learn. Mm. Isn't with, it? with my yeah. spade and trowel and secateurs mm. and, and, and doing new gardens and designing things here. So um, when uh, our youngest son was 14 and sort of off at school and they'd all be pretty independent by then, um, I thought I needed really a job. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so I just started designing for a few people um, and I didn't do a course but I took drawing lessons uh, so I could do a scale drawing, mm-hmm. uh, axo drawings, perspective uh-huh. drawings um, and um, my plant knowledge was fairly fairly good even though I learned something with each garden I go to you do, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. It never yeah. stop, you never, never stop learning, never stop learning. <laughs> But anyway, I thought that I knew quite a lot about plants. Um, and, a, and a couple of years later, I was, I was asked to do a Chelsea um, show garden, which was a bit hilarious, as I really didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> but um, that, that, was, um, that really put me on a professional basis mm-hmm. because I got a gold medal, which was amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, amazing, and, yeah. Um, and people could actually take me a bit more seriously mm-hmm. um, and, and, and then it started and I've travelled um, to America and Italy and Wonderful. Denmark and, mm-hmm. and all over the country which has been fantastic mm-hmm. for designing for or designing yeah, yeah. Oh, it's amazing designing it's incredible yeah. Garden, yeah. wow yeah. And it all started with the trowel and fall. Yeah, but it shows that, you know, career <laughs> has to. <laughs> but career has been growing so many different ways. and yeah. Yeah. That's why gardening is so brilliant because, you know, you can be a gardener, or you can be a designer, mm. or you can be a botanist, mm. or you can be a photographer or a mm. writer. Yeah. You know, there are so yeah. many aspects of Yeah, gardening. they often don't realise, when they talk about horticulture, they think it's just digging a garden or being a landscaper, but exactly. there's so much to it. Yeah, yeah. There's really sciences is. too, as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, And all the environment and the yeah. climate. And, mm. yeah. and everything So like many that. skills in yes. the horticulture industry. Yeah. It's a shame it's not recognised so much, you know, at the careers, at school and college careers level. Yeah. It yeah. certainly wasn't, I know we've said this on the podcast before, but when I was at school and I saw uh, my careers teacher, I was about 50. Ish, yeah. and she had a big book and she mm. said what do you want to do and I said well, I, d- I don't really know and she said well what do you like and I said plants and she looked yeah. through her book and she said well you, you could be a nurse or a teacher <laughs> 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 I'll oh, never forget it really? it's as clear as anything yeah because yeah. I kind of just left thinking 
oh, oh okay maybe she didn't know what plants were plants were clearly not a thing then you know mm-hmm. so I, I no, think no, that's no, changed more it, now it has and especially over the pandemic yeah and people have have been stuck at home and yeah mm. even a window box or a pot in the windowsill yeah you know has just increased their yeah. thirst for knowledge which is mm, amazing totally. because there's nothing that makes well certainly me feel better Mm. after a day in the garden you know you're physically tired yeah but you're so elated and yeah. and yeah. Um, happy and you're having an effect on something directly as well Rewarding. which is exactly. which is lovely yeah. i think this the last uh, year and a half or so has been a golden age for horticulture yes, i exactly. think it really yes. has it, yeah. we've talked about it for so many years we need to encourage more people into horticulture mm. and all of a sudden it happened yeah. you know and if there's anything positive that came out of the yeah. pandemic it's people finding the natural world yeah. and how they needed that so totally. much so uh, you know obviously horticulture in general the sales soared and yeah. uh, Hopefully, the majority of people who really enjoyed their gardens carry on enjoying Hopefully. them, you know, now. So. We've got, we've, we have a, we're lucky enough to have a few volunteers here, mm-hmm. uh, and they're all change of career people, mm. you know, uh, teachers or yeah. accountants. And yeah. They just want to get their hands dirty yeah. and learn a new skill and be the out best. in the open. Oh, yeah. that's the brilliant. best thing. Um, the episode um, in the specials between series four and series five um i'd done some about well-being and one mm. of them was with the well-being fellow from the rhs uh laurianne uh Shalmin Pui. and she the research shows that if you garden two to three times a week your well-being score is something like 6.6 percent mm-hmm. higher than someone who doesn't wow. garden at all which is quite high when you look at the chart that of, of well-being. That's really yeah. good. So it's facts. actual research, yeah. Yeah, factual mm. research yeah, yeah. that can be used yeah. for a social prescribing. It can be used even for urban planning. Yeah. You know, when you're designing uh, new housing estates and things, there yeah. needs to be gardens. You know, yeah. there needs mm. to be green space people for people. People are taking plants more seriously. Yeah. It's yeah. great. Because, you know, we talked about college before, but when, when I was at school in those days, it was like they sent you off to do horticulture if they couldn't think of anything else to do with you. But now, yes. you know, yes. it's a blossoming career. That's career. so true. Yeah. I, I think um, it was said, uh, one politician mm-hmm. um, uh, said about about jobs and things, and, mm. and if you can't do anything else, you can always be a gardener. And, <gasps> that's and, awful. And awful. Yeah. Awful, that's... They always so? seen it as kind of the bottom rung of the yeah. industrial ladder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so you think about the contribution, changing, actually, horticulture, yes. both fina- like economically, but also mm. for the environment mm. in yes. general. It's, yeah. it's like massive. Yeah. You know? I think the tide Absolutely. has turned, though, fingers crossed. Yes, oh, I, I agree. agree. Just like the tide has turned on dandelions as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think people are growing those in different that's ways, true, too. That's true, that's <laughs> true. I've got pink dandelions, can I say that? <laughs> did, did you get, you yeah, germinated well. them? Yes, they've germinated. got flowers. No flowers yet, but the foliage is huge. Actually, sorry, totally off tap. This is why we have to keep a little list of what we're talking about. I'm going to give you one. I've got yeah. two pots full. Oh, that's cool. Because when I go Thanks. away, I don't know what will happen to oh, you. Ooh. So you're going to oh, be in charge. Oh, cool. But she really, she's so annoying. I, I grew Gadisha. Yeah. And they, I didn't, like, I pricked them out really badly when they oh, were too right, legged. Right, they right, failed. Right, right. I also did salpy glosses because they yeah. remind me of growing with my grandma. And I, I grew a whole batch and I gave her half of them. And mine have failed and hers are all in bloom. Mm-hmm. And she's merrily putting the pictures on Instagram. And I'm like, I hate you. Salpy glosses. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't give me. Done, no, where'd you get those? Uh, the Rose Press Garden. Oh, I really found with good detail. I wanted to have all these old favourites. But... The old fashioned fashion. Oh, no, 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 Your no, Tom no. Tato uh, lasted and mine died. Uh, so. Anyway, I'm going to give you the pink dandelions. Yeah. Anyway, okay, back to Zar. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned other landscaping projects, mm-hmm. designs that you've done. Do you have any that you particularly loved and enjoyed that kind of... <sighs> Everyone. I mean, <laughs> yes. I mean, there have been challenges. I did a, I did a, um, a garden by the seaside recently oh, that's nice. a challenge because it's you've got to choose plants which mm. will resist the salt laden wind yeah which is vicious mm-hmm. um, and does that make it quite limited what you can choose or you just have to be creative yes and you hope yeah. find a, a sort of secluded part of the garden where you can grow most things but mm. i've noticed that you know they need to be low because there's a, it's around by a wall but they have to you know, the taller ones just get Buffeted, yeah. you know, yeah. castrums and things like that. Oh, wow. So um, we're learning. It's trial and error about what we can do. And mm. and I and I used um, the RHS books um, mm. for 
for salt-resistant trees, for instance, mm-hmm. and the first line of defence and the second line of defence yeah. and things, um, and even the the hawthorns that I put in, which was first line of defence, are going to have to come out. They're just really? Because they're just not happy with so it. So you learn something with cool. each... Yeah. Each. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and sometimes course. even the theory doesn't work. Like it, it might yeah. say yeah, yeah, exactly. hawthorns are the first line of defence, yeah. if you like, and if you put them in one garden, they might be fine. Yeah, <laughs> and you put them in another, and they're like, no, no, no. Well, that's you. true. Yeah. Yeah. yeah totally. So you know, it is a bit of trial and error, anyway. I think, isn't it? <laughs> so I think every project is lovely. I mean, I do find it very difficult to walk away. Yeah. I mean, yeah. by the time. I bet you're there weeding, aren't you? As well. <laughs> <laughs> When you put the last little sort of bulb in or something, yeah. you think, well, it's my garden, you know. This is, this is I don't know, it's my <laughs> garden. And you've got oh. to sort of say, right, it's not, it's your garden. Oh, wow. Do you have any signature touches that you put into your designs? Mm. I often wonder if garden designers do that. Is there a certain plant that is kind of their signature plant? Or? No, I don't no. think so, because every... Mm. Every garden is different, is so isn't it? Yeah. different and every mm. aspect and, and the climate mm. to each garden mm-hmm. and, the, and the landscape and the architecture of the house and mm, everything so is, you've got to pluck all this, mm-hmm. um, you know, Alexander Pope, the genius of the place. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to really think about that before you start designing. Mm, um, true. <clears throat> and I do have perhaps one or two tried and tested sort of combinations which look good, mm. you know. Um, but it does depend very much on the place. Mm-hmm. True, true. Yeah, it has to fit the landscape, yeah. mm-hmm. doesn't it, and the mm-hmm. surroundings. Mm-hmm. I'm going to ask you a question, actually, that's a little bit cheesy. Have you got any kind of, like, design tips as well? <laughs> why, is that, yeah. why is that cheesy? I don't cheesy? know why that's cheesy. I don't know. It's probably... I just, in my head, I'm thinking this is the last question any garden designer wants to be asked, but yeah. there you well, have I it. i tell you what. <laughs> I find that with, with, with talking with clients, mm. uh, I say to them, Let's get the design right, mm-hmm. the, the paths the right width, the steps the right heights of The things that you can't devices, change afterwards, yeah. The expensive mistakes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All the hard walls, landscaping. Walls, hard landscaping. Yeah. Plants, as a rule, don't cost an arm and a leg. Mm. And if you make a hideous mistake when you, you know, you're left alone with your garden and you suddenly yeah. see a plant and you mm-hmm. put it in, you know, yeah. just oh, definitely. have confidence yeah. because... You know, a lot of people say, "Can you come and look at this border again?" You know, mm-hmm. and and um, and I say, "Well, you know, have confidence and and, and, mm-hmm. and pop them in because it's mm. not the end of the world." Yeah, it it? you can always unplant. You can you? always unplant. Yeah. That's what I do in my garden. Don't have any choice. So <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. Honestly, I planted so much stuff, but I wanted impact straight away. Yes. So I've got this new kind of term, which is unplanting. That's what I'll be doing for the next two years. So basically, plant and unplant. That's your tip. (laughs) Plant and unplant. Uh, What about any must-have plants? Is there a plant for every garden? um, Oh, gosh. Um, I mean, I do love roses. I knew. I don't know why I knew you would say that. Yeah. (laughs) A lot of people are a bit sniffy about roses. But then they were sniffy about dahlias, and I love dahlias, you know. It's sort of And now dahlias, everyone loves dahlias. Yeah, roses will be the next big trend. I I told you so. (laughs) Yeah. I haven't ever gone away. (laughs) Uh, you know, I love I love plants which actually um uh, deserve a place. Mm. Lavender, mm-hmm. um, mm. Eng- English stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> you know? nice. And when I when I was working in America, um, you know, a lot of other plants came in, uh, which were interesting um, and must have. And the same mm-hmm. in, in in Europe, but. Um, you know, it'll be it'll be um, the English stalwarts. You know, the sort sure. of the evergreens. Yeah. I just wish that they could find a um, a treatment for this Asian caterpillar for box because yeah, I don't think the there's a I don't yeah. think there's an alternative to box. Have you found? Uh, what about the uh, they call it luxus, Ilex. which is the Ilex crenata, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and they're kind of calling it Luxus Green Globe. They're kind of mm-hmm. marketing um, to that. That sort is kind of. of similar, isn't yeah. it? It's got the small leaf. Yeah, and... it has. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's, it's difficult, but, I mean, one day they'll they'll be able to... Box blight, I think, is easier to cope mm. with because there's a formula called Top Boxes, which we always okay. use, yeah. buy online. And um, <clears throat> you can spray it every 
five or six weeks and it's a folia feed as well mm. as a preventative mm. okay so it's a good tonic yeah uh-huh. Yeah, I, t- I tell you one thing that I really learned from your garden, and I always think about it is you know, you've got the dutsia, and they're almost I like trained those. on trellis yeah. mm. as a screen, mm. which is a really interesting yeah, way to use dutsia. Yeah. I love it. I yeah. think that's massively yeah. underrated, Definitely. actually. It's a beautiful plant. Mm. And this yeah. is a bicolor one, is it strawberry fields? or No, it's, right. it's a white one. Yeah, oh, so oh. just a white one. It's beautiful and the way it's been trained. It was, it was yeah. always like that. Yeah. Oh, wow. Really? Yes, it was really? always there when I... Because really? I, I would I think it as freestanding shrub. Yeah. 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 yeah, it was. It's just lovely in that context. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And of course you. the gourds, we have to mention and the gourds. gourds. <laughs> have you seen them today? Yeah. No, We no. haven't <laughs> been round there yet, but we are definitely They're going. They're crazy. Well, I hit my head on them. Quite yet. <laughs> another, another. Have they enjoyed weeks. the weather? Yeah, because mm. we've had the rain. And, mm. and the yeah, yeah. We plant them out about the end of May, oh, wow. when most dangers of frosts are mm-hmm. over. Yeah, um, and they grow literally, you know. Mm-hmm. Every day. Fabulous. I think if you visited here every two weeks, there'd always be something different to see. Wouldn't there? We hope so. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, I think definitely. You know, they're, 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 there's now, the wall garden is full of early spring bulbs, mm-hmm. which there never used to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, grasses, which go on, you know, mm-hmm. through the winter. So, so there are lots of, you know, prolonged interest, I think. Mm. Oh, that's super cool. <laughs> amazing. Oh. That's so exciting. I can't wait to go and have a little walk around now. Yeah, it's going to be great. Yeah. How can <laughs> the listeners find out more about you? Where can they find you online? Google Helmium. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, the, the website, which I can't, of course, remember now. Helmium Hall. It'll be easy It will find. be Helmium yeah. Hall. It, it yeah. usually pops up. Yeah. yeah. And there's also Go. a great Instagram account as well, which I think there is Helmingham Hall Gardens. Yes. But again, yes. easy yes. to Katie find. Katie does that yeah. and, and, and Twitter. Mm-hmm. So uh, there's lots of social media yeah. activities going on. So Important. our listeners can yeah. find out more and see all the photographs. And Definitely. ours, of course, because we're going to obviously have loads. Now we're going to go and look around. Yeah. <laughs> That's brilliant. Oh, thank you so much yeah, for coming on the podcast. Thank and, you. And being your first podcast as well. Yeah. <laughs> We've broken the seal now. <laughs> They'll all come flooding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. So it's been a pleasure to meet you. and Thank you very much for having us Lovely here. to meet you. Thank you. Have a good walk round. Thank you. Okay. Hi, it's Nat from Happy Plants here, just bringing you a quick update on what's going on on our commercial bedding plant nursery this October. So as normal for this time of year, we are three quarters of the way through selling our autumn winter lines. We have most of the spring stock planted and we are busy, busy, busy planning for summer. Now, normally working out what we'd be growing for that vital sort of April to July period would involve hundreds of trips around the country, visiting all sorts of breeding grounds, going over to Holland to the plant trials over there. And because of COVID, that hasn't really been possible the last two years. And it's really made us think on our feet a little bit more. As bedding growers, we are addicted to constantly introducing new varieties, new concepts and trying to keep everything really fresh and exciting for you all. And that's brilliant. But Whilst COVID has pushed us back a little bit in that respect, it has made us appreciate the value of the tried and tested products that have been around for years. Especially when we have so many new gardeners joining us, it really is valuable to be able to sell a product and grow a product that we know is going to perform well. So for us, that's a real focus for next year, is revisiting old favourites and and reinvigorating them. I know it's something Michael's spoken about with regards to chrysanthemums as cut flowers, um, but the same could be emulated into bedding plants and things that your grandma grew and might have nostalgic values to you might just reappear in the market. So for us next year is all about reinvigorating those old favourites, those tried and tested varieties. But at the same time, we really cannot wait for June next year when we can hopefully get ourselves back over to Holland, exploring those experimental trial grounds and picking out the diamonds in the rough for years to come. Thank you for joining us on the podcast today. Series 5 is sponsored by the team at Always Cal and Chewy. They're the experts when it comes to this super cool houseplant. Why not visit calandchoey.nl or follow Always Cal and Chewy on Instagram to find out more.
I'm so moody today, Ellen. Why are you moody? Because you're annoying. <laughs> why, what, why am I? I think I know why you're moody and why you I think don't I'm know. Annoying. Oh, you made me do a reel and I hate doing reels and I can't do the transitions. And even when you tell me what to do, I still got it wrong. So basically, <laughs> in a mood, in a basically <laughs> you're in a mood with yourself, but you're well, blaming me. Not. <laughs> well, maybe I am because you did tell me what to do. But uh, I but I, really uh, nice to see a hand. I don't know. Anyway, long story. <laughs> but, the ha- but it's like if we're passing pots. Oh, shut up. <laughs> like this. So if I'm passing you the pot and then a man's hand gives you the pot, that's not me. So it kind of. I know, does... but his arm's not that hairy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> his arms are maybe not as hairy as mine. <laughs> I don't know why. I feel the same, Ellen, of, about reels as I do video. It's like. I don't know. It's just like, for me, it's a real block. I can't get past it. It's like, it feels so <laughs> complex to film stuff and to like set up, even to set the shot up or the light. I'm just like, oh my God, kill me now. But your reels <laughs> are always completely fine. So like, yeah, because you've got plants in and not me. <laughs> and I'm never, I mean, oh, this would be a nice um, actual sponsored event because I'm never doing it for free. But <laughs> like, you know, these dancing reels, things like that. Yeah. I think, like, you'd have to dare me to do it. Obviously, the only reason I'm talking about it is because I want you to dare me to do it. <laughs> I, I, or you, I don't want to do it. <laughs> I asked you to skip for a reel once, and you couldn't mm-hmm. even skip. I so skip the, I, the idea of trying to get you to dance actually scares me. There's a lot of basic things I can't do. I think... <laughs> no i don't know it's weird yeah like i don't know how to wash up properly things like that what you don't know how to wash up i don't know it's like i don't know it's always a hassle isn't it or maybe i don't want to do it yeah it being a hassle is different to not knowing how to do it (laughs) you just don't want to do it oh i don't know ellen which i might add up who who wants to wash up anyway (laughs) i know true but um my dishwasher broke broke like last year and like I, I'm not sure how to fix it, or I don't want to like get it fixed. But you know, you can wash up stuff by hand. That's all right, isn't it? So. But you just said that you don't like doing it, and you don't know how to. This yeah, is you have to do big... it. You have to. <laughs> That's life, isn't it? Of course, but. Do oh, you I don't know. know. You're annoying me again. <laughs> yeah, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ellen, I'm really not in the mood for you. Ellen, I gotta tell you, I'm yes. so hot at the moment. And I don't know, like, my partner, like, wants to have the heating on. And I'm like, I would rather be someone that's cold in the winter. I know that sounds really weird. And, like, but I'm still so hot. And I've even got to the, like, the room in Harrogate, in the hotel room. And probably because I've been in here for three hours on Zoom calls to you and whoever else. And I'm just so hot in the face. I'm Michael. Flash, Michael. Flash, 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 flash. Oh, my flash, gosh. Flash, flash, Michael. Flash. What? <laughs> <laughs> Chill, calm down. I, your irritability and your hot flushes are making me think you might actually be going through the male menopause right now. Oh, the menopause. Oh, the menopause. Maybe. Huh? Do I need to order a Porsche? <laughs> no, but you know. did order a new dishwasher. <laughs> <laughs> True, actually. Oh my God. And do you know what else? I'm in Yorkshire and like you're supposed to drink Yorkshire tea, but I, I don't like tea, Ellen. Well, you're in a real grump. I know. It's, uh, and another thing, right? Right. Uh, okay. This is a uh, this is a subject I wanted to talk about today. Actually, okay. right. You know, like COVID. Obviously, then people then changed the way they did things and this and that and stuff. There's certain stuff that they changed that I think they didn't change back, and they're just like taking the Mickey now. And I'll tell you what's on my list. First of all, there are no notepads in hotel rooms now, and <laughs> very often you need a notepad. And the other thing. Dumping your rubbish at the local tip is now so complex. <laughs> and that's it. That's all on my list. Sorry. Are these the only things that you've got to complain about? Because if they oh, are, that's not, that's not so bad. More. I'll find more. I, I admit that taking rubbish to the tip has become complicated. I've found that as well. But I do yeah. carry a notepad always in my bag. So I have do no you? for that one. Yeah. See, I just always lose lose my pens that's the thing like yeah of course you can write on anything but yeah I don't okay know, i've got something i want to ask you about yeah do you want my allotment my allotment oh, yeah, what about it you went to i blew it, it up 
Oh my gosh, you need to calm down, dude. <laughs> oh, obviously I'm joking. <laughs> I blew it up. <laughs> I only meant to blow the shed door off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I only meant to blow the bloody door off. <laughs> oh my God, that is the funniest I'm going to be this week. <laughs> oh, Ellen. Um, your allotment was looking... Ap- no, what's the word? Resplendent. Oh, yay. <laughs> you said apoplectic. That's definitely the wrong word. No, that's definitely um, not it. Um, Ellen, the size of your cabbages, Jesus, Mary and Joseph. (laughs) Is that normal normal to have a cabbage that big? On my allotment, it's normal to have a cabbage that big. Honestly, it's amazing. So I don't do anything. Like, I can't claim to be an expert brassica grower or anything. You can barely lift it. It's no dig. Um, The soil is quite sandy, but it's mulched every year with a thick layer of plant growth. So Mm. I don't then dig it into the soil. That's just there. Um, I do rotate the crops and uh, I planted out, obviously, the cabbages a a couple of months ago now, the the plants. Mm. And then they're netted with a Harris Horticultural Brassica net. Um, And that's it. So they barely get well they haven't really been watered this year because i've had loads of rain in norwich anyway and they've just sat there and done their thing i don't have slugs and snails they don't seem to like plant growth i'm going to correct you there there were tiny slugs just inside yeah they weren't doing any damage but they were there yeah there were there will be at this point in the year but throughout the time that they've been sorry i didn't mean to bust the illusion ellen no 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 but i need this podcast to be truthful (laughs) <laughs> Throughout the time they've been growing, there's really no, no slugs and snails. They don't seem to really like to grow over the surf uh, to c- come over the surface of the plant growth. And about this time of oh. year is when I start seeing some of the baby slugs but around. They were about. tiny, tiny, weren't yeah. they? Yeah. yeah. yeah um, but by this point, the cabbages are so big that if you take yeah, them and leave them off anyway, the cabbage inside, which is still massive, is pretty much mm. completely undamaged. I so have to had say, a, I was impressed. Yeah, they're pr- the, the brassicas grow really, really well so Mm -hmm. i'm so pleased you went down there because you know i love it so much and being away from it for such a long time it's just nice to know that you know someone's going down there and just saying you know oh it's all okay like nothing major has happened and i know but also like with the vegetables i don't like to i you know i want someone to eat them you know i love growing them and of course i'd love to eat them but it's just not possible at the moment so the fact that you can harvest some and some other friends can harvest some that makes me so happy well i was worried because i know i'm on the harvest list and i was worried that somebody else on the harvest list would be there at the same time and then we'd have to fight over the celeriac or something (laughs) I, like, I drove up to the allotment really gingerly. I was like, who's already on this harvest list? <laughs> There's only two of you on the harvest oh, list. Oh, so well, I obviously chance, chose a good time. Chances <laughs> of you bumping into each other are pretty slim. Uh, really. My parents I, as well, but they grow their own, so I don't really yeah. think that they're likely to go down there so much. So, yeah. uh, I got myself four celeriac. Beautiful. Yum. Oh, my yeah. gosh. What do you make with, with, with them? I don't know. I've been obsessed with making celeriac steaks recently, you know, just frying them. And they're just, the the texture is just lovely. Yeah. Or um, I've been using them uh, in little blocks in a tarty flat, using it in space of potato, which works nicely as well. So, yeah, yeah, that could be cool. I got the kale, Ellen, and I, I messaged you in the week, didn't I? It's like, I've got this kale and it's all wilted now. And I said... Well, when I buy kale at the supermarket, it doesn't will. And you said, well. And that's well, me I need You've got to it. just yeah. think about why yeah. it hasn't wilted at the yeah, supermarket. I know. Not why it's wilted when you've just harvested it. But Ellen, it is, it's quite scary when you then realise that. And I would have kale in the fridge that would easily be okay in that bag for two weeks. You Your know, kale, 24 hours, but ultimately what is better for you? You know, it's just... Yeah. It's, it's crazy, that difference and how scary the one in the fridge is. Yeah, really. I always think like when you grow your own, it really makes yeah. you very aware of what you're buying from the supermarket. Like obviously when, oh. I was harvest, when you harvest strawberries from your allotment, you know, organically oh. grown strawberries, they don't last so long in the fridge, but yeah, you buy a exactly. packet of strawberries, they can last absolutely ages. So you almost you, have to be aware of that and plan differently, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I think when you grow your own food, you sort of harvest for what you're going to eat that day or the next yeah. day. But you know, with kale, if it's wilted, um, 
I, I assume you put it in the fridge anyway. It's still great for like stir fries and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. So no, it just surprised me. Yeah. <laughs> and the big cabbage, what will you make of that? We made some uh, really nice kind of cabbage and carrot kind of Polish type thing. But nice. we didn't have any dill, which was, when you haven't got dill, there's nothing that will substitute for dill, frankly. <laughs> and so, yeah, but it was nice. Um, but I maybe make some sauerkraut as well or something. So, nice. yeah. I mean, to be honest, like vegetables, there are so many brilliant recipes for vegetables. It's really easy to forget that sometimes. And you yeah. tend to look at it as like, oh, I'll boil that up or I'll steam that up. But there's actually, you can do a load with veg. Even yeah, if you're not... And I've got some beet um, in my uh, fridge at the moment, some beetroot, and I, I never realised how easy it was to roast them. Like, yeah. where have I been all my life? <laughs> I, I think, um, I honestly think that when you grow your own food, uh, obviously I eat plant-based diet anyway, so if I was to only boil, you know, or steam yeah, yeah, yeah. my veg, Absolutely. it would be a seriously boring diet. So you do sort of learn different ways, you know, to yeah. make veg, which is really cool. But when you grow your own, you definitely do that as well. Mm-hmm. But this is really nice, you know, like you're taking the fresh veg and then you're like, oh, there's like a million other recipes for cabbage rather than, I don't know, boiling it or sauerkraut, I suppose, you know, so that's... Oh, super- defo, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, also, um, do you like Japanese pancake, economiyaki? This is de- like based around cabbage. That's okay. really cool. Like they'd often add like uh, maybe seafood or some pork to it, but easily you can have it as is. And it's just, oh, it's delicious. It's yeah. kind of thickened up with like yam flour. It's right, very lovely okay. texture. And that is predominantly cabbage. So you're going to fart a lot. <laughs> you know what? Interestingly, when you eat a lot of vegetables, when you start, you do get gas. Um, but the more you eat, the less gas you get, because I guess your stomach yeah. gets used to You're just like drinking fish. water. Like, you know, the more you get into the habit of it, you're not going to need to pee all the time because your yeah. body's using it, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Speaking of which, I'm just oh, going to drink. Cool. <laughs> oh, well, Ellen. How lovely. Well, I'm really, um, I feel quite sad for you being grumpy sitting in a hotel room I'm on your own. I'm not grumpy anymore. Don't bring it back. You chewed me up. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you just made such a big deal out of it. But it's great you're not grumpy anymore. Let's move on. Theatrical. Um, Ellen, uh, I'm filming something tomorrow for Seth's Pack Lunch at Harlow Car, and we are incorporating glycerining your leaves up. Fabulous. Isn't it cool? I didn't realise how cool this was of a way to preserve your leaves and your flowers. And I didn't believe that it worked, first of all, because you do it and it kind of comes out and it looks the same. But I happened to have a leaf that wasn't glycerined up on the side. And the comparison was one had wilted to nothing and the other one just looked the same. Yeah. Cry- cryogenic? Is that a right Amazing, word? Amazing, isn't it? And, you know, you yeah, can, then, you can really use cool. those preserved leaves for so many different things, you know? Yeah. It's amazing. So like autumn foliage, you can keep that kind of look almost all year round by glycerin. What do you call it? There must be a cool phrase for it. I don't don't know, but then you can like create displays with it, do some art with it, just have it hanging around. It's lovely. It's really cool. Much easier than using a laminator. (laughs) (laughs) No, but when you look up how to preserve leaves, that is, that's one of the other things it suggests, laminating them. Laminating, really? Yeah, it seems really weird, doesn't it? I have never done that before, that's for sure. I don't know. That's exciting. So are you in the hotel now because that's what you're going to be doing or...? Yeah, 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 yeah. But I needed to, because I had so many different meetings, I needed to get up like early to then have them here. Otherwise, you know how it is, you end up recording something in a lay-by and it's just like the most unglamorous thing in the world. But I'm in the Yorkshire Hotel in Harrogate, which is very lovely. Not drinking Yorkshire tea? No. Well, I did have a cup. It was all right, but it wasn't that exciting. Um, I'm going to get hate mail for this. Um, so we're filming at Harrogate Car tomorrow, and then on th- Thursday we're live in the studio doing a... <laughs> you know how TV works, Ellen? Like, we're doing a um, segment. Where I don't know what it's about yet. So. <laughs> We'll find out maybe tomorrow at some point. But aren't you, you're going on Doodah soon with the Mangava and such, aren't you? I'm You've going on uh, WCNC here in Charlotte. So we're going to be doing, making Halloween decorations from house plants and yeah. there's some cool, funky, different house plants that you can use rather than the traditional succulent kind of display. And uh, yeah, and then a couple of weeks later after that, I think it's going to be Christmas decorations of houseplants mm-hmm. and stuff. So yeah, doing some when segments is it, as well. Day next week? Pardon? 
What day is it next week? It's then? Thursday this week. Oh, ah, cool. Oh, this week. Oh, so this is two days' time. Yeah. Yeah, in two days' time. Oh, and, you know, as as you would expect, I'm not wholly prepared just yet. <laughs> I think mean, just anything like this, you just need to kind of go with, I don't know, it's the adrenaline that gets you through. And sometimes it's really hard to plan things in advance because different ideas come up. And I'm, I'm always... Like TV is always like that. And I'm always like, oh, can it not be more planned? But no, it's just something about it that just, I yeah. Think, yeah, as long as you've got yeah, your energy, props. energy, isn't it? As long as you've got your props and you know kind of what line you're going on, props being yeah. the plants, really, um, you kind of just go with it. And it even if you do completely plan it out, it never goes according to plan anyway. Um, it's just like in a natural it. conversation. When you're chatting with someone yeah. or you're interviewed about it, you get asked different questions. Something different might pop into your head that you think is really relevant for this Absolutely. moment. And it doesn't ever go 100% to plan anyway. So as long as you love your plants, you know sort of what where you're going with it, what what the topic is about. The best thing to do is just let it let it go on the day, you know. Well, otherwise, you just look mega rehearsed, which is obviously not what anyone yeah. wants to look like. Yeah, completely. Maybe they do. I don't know. <laughs> well, tough. <laughs> do I have melon? Is it, anyway. Uh, oh, it's still looking good, actually. Uh Sorry, I was just planning my autumn walk in Harrogate. Oh, well, I think you should go and do your autumn walk. Yeah, I, I am going in a minute, actually. You'll feel so happy about it. I've also got somewhere around about 10,000 words to write in two days, so I'm oh, also going to go and do that. And I'm, right. attempt- I'm attempting not to be grumpy about it. But <laughs> what do it, you have in- to write about? Internally, I am. Uh, it's all gardening, all gardening and plant stuff. I but- know that, but what in particular? <laughs> Uh, growing a lawn, uh, uh-huh. like edible plants, uh, how to make the most out of a small space. Oh, uh, cool. Loads. Have you thought about outsourcing it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I would prefer to write it myself. <laughs> I can I can tell by your reaction, Ellen, that 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 question that I just asked was on the do not ask list. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell that's on the do not ask list. <laughs> Although on the do ask list, I'll ask about your dog. Oh, my little dog. Is that Dolly. on the do ask list? Yeah. Dolly Parton. She's all yeah. right. She's settling in. She's. We've only had her a week. She's coming out of herself a little bit. She's very nervous of people. She's particularly nervous of men. So I'm. I think she hasn't been treated very well by men. She's kind of just now getting used to my husband, um, but she's stuck to me like Velcro. Um, and when we first had her for a few days, she didn't wee inside our place. She would only go outside, and we were like, "Wow, we are on a winner here." But that's just all gone wrong, and she's just weeing inside now. So she's peeing on your manuscripts. Oh, <laughs> uh, she better not. So, um, but she is adorable, and I'm actually super pleased to have her, even though it's hard work and early mornings. I'm pleased because when I'm not here, my husband's yeah. got something to keep him amused and company. So yeah, and it's annoyed by yeah, I didn't, I didn't, and something to annoy him when you're not there. <laughs> <laughs> your stunt double. Yeah, I'm just gonna train her in all of my ways so that she annoys him when I'm not here. But yeah, no, I'm really pleased, and I keep just saying yeah, she's his dog because then I don't have to take responsibility at all, which is lovely. I just get all the cuddles. You'll take responsibility when you get a puddle of urine on your pillow. <laughs> well, she's not allowed on my bed, I might add. <laughs> you. Cool. All right, Ella Mary, I'm literally packing up my computer around you. <laughs> right, okay, fine. Well, I mean, if that isn't a sign to get rid of me, I don't know what is. <laughs> Tidy up the party when it's only about 9.15 p.m. Yeah, when you want everyone to go, but they're still all having fun. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm all, I'm all packed up. Are you still Okay. There? It's been lovely chatting with you. Enjoy your walk around Harrogate. I hope that it completely chills your mood and Thank your cheeks. You very much. I really appreciate it. I'm literally going to close the laptop lid now. Bye. <laughs> Bye. The music for the Plant Based podcast is part of the song Grow by Mikey James. And our editor is Gareth Patch of Semi Echo. Hold up. 